to have you before us. And I think today's uh, tragic events in Brussels really are a stark reminder of the many challenges that you all deal with every day and that we are here to support you with. And I especially appreciated both your comments on the need for budget stability as you deal with the challenges of today, but also with the need to look forward. Uh, because as we all know, and I remember a previous chairman, Ike Skelton, always commenting upon that we plan for today, but we never quite know where the next challenge is going to come from. And uh, in the world we live in today, it's clear that they can come from many, many different places. But Secretary Carter, I also wanted to thank you for your, the emphasis you've placed on this year's budget on research and development, uh, really knowing that it's key to maintaining our technological edge, that in this rapidly changing environment, we've got to maintain our investments. And as many on the committee know, defense-related uh, research and development has faced a disproportionately large cut over the past several years, far more than has been required under the Budget Control Act. So I was especially encouraged uh, to see that the department will be investing in two new facilities at MIT's Lincoln Lab. As you know, the lab has provided the department with breakthrough advancements for decades, and I thank you for your support of the lab's revitalization and the important role that it plays in the Massachusetts innovation ecosystem. Uh, it's all it's part of something much larger. But I'd like to turn to the issue of sexual assault prevention and response in the military. Uh, I've been troubled by a number of stories, including a series in the AP and recent stories in the Washington Post about senior officer sexual assault cases, which have called into question the transparency of the military justice system and the service's willingness to pursue allegations against officers. I understand that the Military Justice Review Group's proposal that was shared with this committee by the department gives the department two years to come up with a design for an online system of tracking cases and two years to implement that system. And I would encourage the department to work with all speed uh, to make the military justice system as transparent as possible. And I hope the department will make this system open to survivors and the public as you move ahead. But we have all heard the troubling accounts of victims of military sexual assault who are later retaliated against, those who seek uh, recourse through the system of justice. Some 62 percent of victims have experienced social or professional retaliation, according to the department's own survey data. And I've also read the Judicial Proceedings Panel recommendation to implement a standard retaliation reporting form. Uh, it is imperative to me that the department track these incidents and hold those responsible accountable. Key to maintaining the unit cohesion and all that is part of readiness as well. So I have my questions, our Secretary Carter. What is the department doing to ensure service members who report sexual assault aren't retaliated against? Thank you uh, very much for that uh, question. And uh, sexual assault is uh, uh, unacceptable anywhere in society, but it's particularly unacceptable in our military. And the reason is this. The profession of arms is based upon trust, and it's based upon honor. And sexual assault erodes both honor and trust, and for that reason is completely unacceptable at any level. Moreover, to get to your point, as we uh, study that question more and take more action, and I'm, I'm not happy with that there's sexual assault in the military, I am very pleased that we are taking it on frontally. And we need to do that, and we need to learn how to do better. The two issues you raised are places where we are learning how to do better. Retaliation, for example, was something that I don't think, I think it's fair to say in our department, the, we did not appreciate the importance of that phenomenon until uh, the last couple of years. And so we are having to take that on board. That, that retaliation creates additional victims to the victim of the, the sexual assault. Um, and this can be peers. Uh, and it can be uh, others who are part of, the, of giving the victim uh, their uh, care, their uh, right, the, the options, and the response that they deserve. 
Uh, and so it's an important new ingredient, and we are trying to get on top of that. And finally, with respect to transparency, we're committed to that. Uh, you're right. We have made a commitment to you about greater transparency in this matter, uh, and, and I intend for us to carry <coughs> that through. Thank you for raising this. Thank subject. you. I've run out of time. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.